It's unmuted. Okay, great. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us again. It's 5.31, I'm gonna call the meeting to order. So can everybody just by a nod of the head on the screens, can you guys uh, show me that you can hear me okay? Yeah, okay, great. Jerry, can you, Jerry, you can hear us okay too? Jerry, okay, good. So um, thank you. So um, I guess the first thing we should probably do is a roll call vote or a roll call. Okay. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Gail to do a roll call. Okay. Paul Haro. Here. Dr. Jacoby. Here. David Sawyer. Here. Lori Regan. Here. Bill Rooney. Bill, is he there? He's there. Here. <laughs> Mark Potato. Here. Jason Parento. Here. Scott Dominici. Here. Rob Geddes. Here. Stephen Withers Jr. Here. Ed Stanton. Here. Jerry Freecott. He's here. He's here. Wasn't unmuted. Oh, okay. Yep, just gotta unmute it, Jerry, when you are um, chiming in. A little habit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jackie Romanicki. Here. <laughs> Terry, Terry DeSisto. No. Mike Tyler, Andrew Acosta. Here. And I think that's it for that. Oh, yeah, everybody but one. Mike is the only one not here? Two, Terry's not here. Mike and Terry, okay, cool. Well, Mike is- Mike looks like Mike is here, just doesn't have a camera. Yeah. Um, and he's here. muted. Um, Mike Tyler, are you there? Hey, Mike, can you hear us okay? Okay. Yeah. He might have signed in and walked away for a moment. So anyway, all right. So let's go, call the meeting to order at 531. And I guess the first thing is the attendance, which we've done that and the roll call. Now the vote, the approval of the minutes, um, March 11th, has it been that long? Um, they were emailed on the 19th. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Oh, second. <laughs> second. Roll I think, uh, Gail, can you explain the rules because you attended that meeting? I think we're supposed to roll call oh, oh, every yes. vote with okay. in this remote. So it's going to slow things down a little bit, but this is just the guidance that um, we've been given. So we're going to go ahead and do a roll call on the uh, minutes from uh, March 11th. So Paul Haro. Uh, uh, yes. Yay. Yay. Jack Jacoby. Yes. David Sawyer. Yes. Lori Regan. Yes. Bill Rooney. Yes. Mark Potato. Yes. Jason Parento. Yes. Scott. Yes. Um, Rob Geddes. Yes. <laughs> Stephen Withers. Yes. Ed Stanton. Yes. Jerry Freecott? Yes. <clears throat> Jackie Romanicki? Yes. Mike Tyler? No. Yeah, Mike's muted according to the screen. Mm -hmm. Andrew Acosta? Andrew? Yes. Thank you. Anybody have Mike's cell phone number? I'll give Mike a call, yeah. So. He's never actually checked in, so uh, let me send him a message. I'm just gonna send Mike Tyler a message. Um, hi, period. Are you on the SBC meeting, question mark? Okay, cool. All right, so moving on. Um, Get that motion carried. That's right, motion car motion passes, yes. Sorry, Is thank you. Is it necessary to say first and last name, do you think? No, okay. no, no I don't first think name's good enough. enough. Okay. So if you uh, want to get in a good habit while you're using the video conference, if you are not in, you're not speaking, you can go ahead and mute your uh, microphone uh, or you can leave it on. But most most people have it muted right now. And then when it's time to speak, you go ahead and unmute it. Uh, but leave that up to you guys. Oh, Mike just responded right now. Yes, no video. OK. Can you hear us okay, question mark, because we could not hear you for the last two roll calls, period. I just spoke with uh, Mike. I'm just talking with Mike right now through text. 
Um, he says, yes, but no video. Anyway, moving on. Um, so, so we have to have a vote um, on the following bills and payments. So I'm gonna read these off and I believe that we have to vote on them one by one, Skanska, KBA, Consigli, Briggs. Um, so I'm gonna- Can't we take them as a group, Mayor? Can we take them as a group? I don't know the answer. To, um, I think so. I thought we have in the past. I think we have in the past. Okay, if we do it in the past, okay. So I'm just gonna read these off and then I'll do one roll call vote at the end. Uh, so I'm gonna read these off. Skanska, the amount of $117,270. Uh, KBA, the amount of $115,891. And Consigli was updated a moment ago, just before the meeting started. So this is the new number, and it's $5,474,662.88. And then we have Briggs Engineering and Testing for $9,085.50. <laughs> the total is actually different than what it was. Gail, do you know what the new total is? Okay, so Gail is actually giving us a new total because the... Consigli changed. Uh, yeah, that went down by almost 300 grand. Yep. Okay. And Mike Tyler voted yes on both votes, on both roll calls. All right. I have five, seven, one, six. 90908. 5716-90918. Okay, so. Oh, sorry, 08. 08, okay. So for the, the vote, we're voting on uh, a total of $5,716,909.08. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Second. Very good. So let's do a roll call again. Mayor Haro? Yes. Jack? Yep. Dave? Yes. Lori? Yes. Bill? Yes. Mark? Yes. Jason? Yes. Scott? Yes. Rob? Yes. Steve? Yes. Ed? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Jack? You already asked. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Jackie. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Mike. Mike said yes on invoices to payment vote. So he's listening. He just doesn't have a camera and microphone, oh, okay. but he just said yes on voices, invoices, uh, payment vote. So yeah. Actually, uh, Gail, can I, can I interrupt one second? Gail, the total is 38 cents, not 08. It's okay. five, seven, one, six, nine, oh, nine and 38 cents. Okay. okay. Thank you. 38 cents. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I think I got Andrew, right? Uh, yes. Thank you. Okay, very good. So the motion passes. And uh, thank you everyone for that. So moving on. Um, so next is the vote to approve the KBA contract with LGCI for additional work on the Western Fields. Before we move to vote on that, do we have any discussion about that? Because there might be some. Yeah, um, so Gail, Gail sent around an email late today. Don't know if you've all seen it. But one of the issues that came up last week was that the uh, amount of topsoil that has to be removed by the uh, site work contractor um, needed to be uh, looked at by um, the professionals, the uh, geotech, to make sure that they took enough, that they didn't take too much, and that before we started putting the sub base down that the uh, appropriate um, uh, topsoil had been taken away so that we were building on a solid surface. Is that a fair explanation? Uh, I'll ask Steve and or Joe. Uh, that's pretty much correct, yes. Um, uh, both Luke um, or, or Eric from our office as well as LGCI will be reviewing the excavation to establish the sub base that'll be used for the field. And so we got a price for someone there full-time and a price for someone there half-time. And uh, uh, Mary Ann suggested that the half-time was enough to uh, fulfill our needs. And so she's recommending that we go ahead with uh, supplementing KBA's contract with a half-time person for about two weeks from LGCI. Is that 
And the halftime half time is um, every day, not like Monday, Tuesday, half a day, Wednesday. It's every day stopping by the site uh, to review the excavations uh, and give direction. So it's, uh, it's an everyday visit, um, just not sitting there all day, but it's actually visiting the site every day, even though it's half time. Marianne, can we hear you? You're muted. Yeah. Marianne, you're still on mute, Marianne. You'll have to turn it off. You're still muted. Yep, you're still muted, muted Marianne. She shows up as Anjanette. I don't know. Yeah, I know. That is true. clearly not Anjanette. <laughs> no, we, I had to forward her my login information. Okay. So, Marianne, you're still on mute, so you're going to need to find the mute button on your screen. Yes, you know that. Okay. <laughs> you can see it nodding your head. If you press the space bar, it temporarily unmutes you. Thanks, Bill. It's good to know. Still can't hear you. Yeah. I think, I think she was having some trouble with her um, speaker before. Uh, Jim, do we have the ability to unmute her for her? Um, I can mute everyone. It, but yeah. She has to ultimately undo it. Undo okay. Herself. All right. Well, I think we have the explanation anyway. She's going to write it down. Oh, she's right. <laughs> oh, yes, okay. you're yeah. correct. <laughs> All right. Cool. We see that. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Um, okay. So, is there any more discussion about that? Um, does anybody else have any questions, concerns about uh, the contract for KBA uh, with LGCI? No? Okay. So do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. Let's do a roll call once again. Mayor Haro. Yes. Jack. Yes. Dave. Yes. Lori. Yes. Bill. Yes. Mark. Yes. Jason. Yes. Scott? Yes. Rob? Yes. Steve? Yes. Ed? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Mike? Yes, on additional soil removal, Mike just texted. And Andrew? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so the motion passes. Okay, so moving on, we have a project update and review of change log requests. So I'm going to turn it over to Steve, I think is probably the most appropriate person. Steve being Steve Johnson. Steve being Steve Johnson, that's correct, yes. Uh, yeah, so um, we, we had uh, distributed the, the change request log. Uh, Gail, I believe everyone yeah. has a copy of that? Yes. All right, so if we want to look at that, um, last month we had discussed up through uh, item 77. So I was hoping we could start at 78. A uh, couple of reminders. Uh, anything on the sheet that's gray is either resolved, voided, or approved already. Uh, anything with a number in the second to last column, you'll see some nines. That's on change order nine. Um, those, that's going to be floated on in a little bit, so we'll skip over those. So we'll just focus on anything in uh, in white, uh, starting at number 79. And another reminder, if you see the price column, the price square, and it says EST, that is just an estimate right now. It's just an order of magnitude. It means we haven't gotten firm pricing from the subs yet. And when in doubt, we are conservative with that number. Um, but... Uh, we try to put a little bit of thought into it. So we'll go through the list. Um, item 79, uh, that is some plumbing main revisions for the third and fourth floor. That's a uh, coordination item. We basically relocated mains from the fourth floor down to the third floor. Uh, we're hoping that's either $0 or possibly a credit. Uh, item 80, uh, added drain. Uh, we, we looked at adding two drains up on the roof under um, and around the rooftop units. We just thought it would be uh, a better design, a better idea and limit ponding based on the way the roof and the uh, roofing material will be sloped. Uh, item 81, 
is some stair railing revisions. Um, this was done with maintenance in mind, uh, changed some of the railing materials to stainless steel and eliminated uh, painting and the need to paint every year. Uh, item 82, uh, lighting control revisions. This was, uh, this is a lead requirement, L-E-E-D, um, to add dimming in certain rooms, the waiting areas and sensory rooms. Item 83, uh, there was a conflict uh, with curtain wall and steel just at the corner of the gym. There's a, there's a couple of pieces of glass that come together there and we adjusted a, had to adjust the curtain wall detail so it would uh, bypass the steel. Item 84 uh, is on change order nine. Item 85 is uh, we, there's some um, details that we, we adjusted uh, with the KBA to uh, assist with matching the way the insulation is tapered. And then it'll, the, uh, the fascia profile changed to avoid oil canning, um, like a bending or a warping effect. Item 86. Uh, there is one ceiling in the computer lab that was changed from gypsum wallboard to acoustical ceiling tile for acoustic reasons. Item 87, uh, VRF changes. Um, there were some, some recommend, recommendations that came back from the vendor that adjusted quantity and size um, that just makes for what we think is a better uh, installation. So there's some, there some cost there. Uh, 88 is the COVID-19 cost impacts. Um, that's the, the new requirements from the state and the CDC that entail some uh, additional PPE protective gear and, and testing and some different things that we have to do on site. Uh, Steve, while, while you're yes. there, um, yes. would you just um, address so everyone knows, you know, that you've promulgated a plan and the things that we're doing to make sure that the workers stay safe? And, and uh, yes, so, so we have a site specific plan uh, that addresses all the COVID-19 requirements. It, it is uh, compliant with the current CDC guidelines and uh, the guidelines put out by the governor. Um, it, it, in, it does a few things. It, uh, one of the things we do is we ensure all the workers are, are, are healthy when they come to the site. Um, they're basically verifying temperature and that they haven't been exposed to anyone or have any symptoms themselves. Um, there's additional requirements for social distancing on site and if, if and when masks are required. Um, there are additional hand washing stations that have been put in place. We've limited basically on site meetings and gatherings. Um, we, all of our meetings are essentially like this. There's some sort of video conference. Um, there are very few uh, meetings that are on site and if they are on site, they basically happen outside with social distancing kept in mind. Um, and we, we just have been trying to limit um, the face-to-face -face contact as much as possible. But even with all that in place, the reason you're suggesting there might be some additional cost is because it does slow some things down, correct? It does. So we meet, we meet every day um, and, and, and walk through all these requirements. And then there's additional protective gear that's required um, that has cost some money and just the additional hand washing stations. Um, and then we, we might, um, one of the things that is in here is um, we had a lot of steel delivered to the job site and because there was a fear that the steel plant was going to be shut down. So um, because there's so much steel, we, we've had to adjust and add some additional roads just to uh, allow access onto the site. So there's a little bit of cost for that kind of stuff that's in here as well. So I just got a message from Mike Tyler saying that item 88, this COVID-19 uh, cost impacts uh, should be a reimbursable expense for us because uh, state and federal governments, MEMA and FEMA are giving us at some point in the future after we apply for it, uh, reimbursement uh, for anything COVID related. 
But I was, Steve, I was wondering though, this uh, $43,000 estimated, what is that going to? It's not $43,000 worth of uh, face masks. So how does that 43,000, just kind of curious. Yeah, so it's um, part of it is uh, temporary roadways um, and access because of all the seal that's on site. And some of it is just projecting out the costs uh, for a couple of months of, like I said, the additional hand washing stations, the additional cleaning services. We're cleaning bathrooms on site multiple times a day. Then we have professional cleaning done twice a week. Um, so it's that kind of stuff all kind of projected out. So it's, it's an estimate right now. Okay. And what was that about the, uh, the roads? You mentioned something about roads, uh, the yeah. first thing you mentioned. Yeah. So because we, had so much steel delivered for fear that the plant was going to be shut down. It basically cut off access um, for all the other deliveries. Um, steel was more important. So um, we had to adjust, make some new roadways, make some new pathways and, and okay. cost a little bit of money to do that. Okay. I remember that now. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Keep going. Yes. Uh, item 89 uh, is a, an adjustment to, uh, parapets on the roof and then the length and size and some of the steel required to do that work. Uh, number 90 uh, was uh, some additional channel steel channels added at the main overhang of the building uh, just to allow some additional support uh, with the CMU that's already there. Number 91 is um, something we're looking at and, and we might be able to tap into an allowance that's already prepared for this, but um, we have to level off the curbs that the large air handling units are sitting on based on the slope of the roof and the slope of the steel. So we kind of have to counter, uh, counter slope it. So it's all level. Item 92 was an added electric vehicle charging station. This is a lead requirement to add one more based on the number of parking spaces on the project. Item 93 is um, some dugout clarifications for the Western field. Uh, the, the main driver here is um, adding a concrete pad underneath the dugouts in order to secure the uh, concrete, uh, secure the dugouts properly. Uh, it was originally asphalt and now it was uh, changed to concrete uh, in order to keep the dugout secure. And then item 94 uh, was uh, a lentil shown on architectural, but not on the structural. And, and in the, the public bid world, um, it meant that it didn't exist to the sub. So um, it was added in and we'll have to capture that cost. Steve, on the dugouts, if I remember right from this morning, um, we're getting prefabricated dugouts and that's why this requirement was for a different surface. Yeah, so it's, it, yes, they're pre prefabricated that need to be secured and um, based on the weight and the, and the wind and the up, upload from this uh, asphalt wouldn't be sufficient. The, the original, the original uh, spec in detail was for a chain link fence enclosure um, that the posts would go through the asphalt down into the ground on uh, footings. However, uh, when we went to... Uh, the prefabricated dugouts, uh, the de detail wasn't changed, and so we need to have the concrete to secure the, the dugouts themselves down to a solid base. Uh, the asphalt isn't secure enough. It, as you know, it gets soft in the summer um, when they're being used, and a, a strong wind might, might pull them out of the ground. So uh, the concrete is the thing to do. And then, Joe, um, for the added uh, EV charging stations, um, Craig summarized for us this morning that we have, we need to achieve 49 points on lead mm -hmm. in order to comply with the MSBA requirements. Uh, and currently we're running at about 55 points. Right. And so therefore, um, we have a, a small margin for error, uh, but we still do have a margin for error, correct? A, you know, a small margin for possible rejection, and uh, there's usually something that's rejected at some point by USBBC when they go through all the submissions. So you want to have a little bit of a buffer uh, to be sure that you meet that 49 points because the 49 points is the threshold 
you need to be at to attain the additional 2% reimbursement from the MSBA. That's the minimum you have to be. So we always build in a buffer and, and uh, uh, this was just a, a miss on our part. We uh, added up the parking spaces, counted the number of EV stations we had. And as it turned out, we're just over the threshold for the additional station. Uh, we're putting it in where we can make the most uh, equitable use. Um, just to clarify, um, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's Craig Olson from KBA. Uh, just to clarify, uh, from an MSBA standpoint for the additional 2%, we have to get points between 40 and 49. Um, is the range we have to live in. Um, it's, and that's a certified, but in addition to that, we need to perform 20% from an energy efficiency standpoint, 20% better than code. Um, and so when we look, when we talk about that is we're all, the project is required for, from a reimbursement standpoint to at least get 40 points. Um, and then the additional um, 20, and then the 20% above code. What I can report to the group, and we submitted for the design submission today um, to lead is, and they'll be go through their review and not every point's guaranteed, it's part of a pro the process, but we have submitted on 55 points for the design side of things. Um, and we're targeting 55 points currently. Um, in addition to that, we are currently at 35% better than code, which is the baseline case from an energy efficiency standpoint for the building. So um, we are comfortable in the threshold of the additional reimbursement from this MSBA. And of course, one of the principles we've always had is to perhaps spend a little bit more on the building and have less impact on the budget for the school department going forward. So energy efficiency should pay us back enormously over the course of the next 50 to 75 years. Yes, and to build on the, the, the what Jack was mentioning about the 49 points, um, that is the, the higher level of certified. Um, at 50 points and above uh, to 59 is what they call lead silver. Um, that is not a requirement of the MSBA, but um, as designers and uh, even as for your best interest is bragging rights to do better than the minimum. So we're, we're gonna chase as many points as we can and try to get the highest uh, lead rating we possibly can for you. Thank you. Craig, uh, sorry, Jack. How oh, many points is the charging station? Just uh, The charging station is one point. It's important also uh, to note that reimbursement is um, tied to this 2% reimbursement from the MSBA. Okay. okay. Good. Um, just to pick up on one other thing, uh, Steve, do you want to uh, uh, just let everybody know, you know, the, again, the issue with the, um, super metal and the steel and what you did and why we did it? Sure. Um, yeah, when uh, a, lo a lot of different cities uh, were shutting down non-essential operations up in Canada, uh, super metal, our steel fabricator was originally thought to have been non-essential and thought they were gonna have to close down. So they had fortunately a lot of steel ready to ship down to us that they were going to you know sporadically send down but we decided to take it all at once uh, in the event that they were actually shut down so we spent a few days basically just offloading steel and stockpiling the steel so we would have it for a couple of weeks in the event that they did close um, they ended up not having to close which was great news uh, but they did have to reduce workforce and they did cut some production. Um, so in the long run, it was a good move by our, um, by the team to decide to do that and take on the steel. So um, we might've sacrificed a few days of erection, but, uh, and you know, 
if in a snapshot that day, we might've been behind schedule, but we have since caught up now since we had so much steel and we continue to get steel deliveries. Good. Um, one other issue that I know you've shared with the Wednesday morning group, and I think you ought to share with the entire group is the brick situation. Yes. Um, so our brick for the project is coming out of a plant that's in Pennsylvania. And that unfortunately was not deemed an essential operation by the state of Pennsylvania. So that, that plant has been shut down uh, indefinitely. Um, we are looking at an alternate brick product. It was one of the alternates um, that was on the table earlier for decision. We have that sample coming to the site, I believe tomorrow. Um, it, it's a, it's something that is available. I think it's made in New England, um, but either way, that plant is still in operation. It, it, so it is an option. It is not a hundred percent critical at this time, uh, only that because we don't need the brick until October. And if the plant is opening, if it's open, it takes three to four weeks to get the brick we need. Um, however, we want to be prepared for worst case scenario that we, we can't get the brick that was originally specified. And also we have a mock-up that we're trying to get done and we need the brick obviously for the mock-up as well. So we want this alternate brick ready to go just in case. Thank you. Is, it, is it possible that with them being shut down for that long, any other, any other customers they have may also be waiting for brick so even if it does take that three to four weeks is that accounting for any additional time to satisfy other orders by that company no great question rob we we don't know 100 percent um we we do know that our brick was approved and is like in line if if you will it, 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 we have a time slot but we don't know how many people are in front of us and you know how long it'll take to catch up thank you yeah, we Rob, we won't know until until they open up, essentially. But we're hoping that because we we were early, we're still going to be a little early, and, and we we have a little bit of time since we don't need it till October. Thank you, Steve. Do you want to um, you know share with us uh, you know the construction progress? And I don't know if you have any slides or. Um, pictures yep. that you might show yeah hopefully i can share my screen properly and show the drone footage uh one sec you need rachel there yeah uh, yeah I do. Um, hold on. I think I have too many windows open. Let me try one thing here. Can you guys see my screen? Not yet. No. Okay. How about now? Yes. All right. All right. Um, so this wonderful pile of mud is essentially the Western fields. Uh, we're in the process of uh, stripping the topsoil and the loam out as described. Um, the rain actually has not been our friend, um, but uh, knock on wood so far, the material we're finding there is pretty good and, and not a problem. So we're hoping it stays that way. Um, so that that's progressing nicely. You get you see we have the temporary fence and scrim around it. Um, the the green is um, the erosion control that's in place. That was all um, inspected and, and improved by Concom, so we're good to go there. Uh, and then if we spin around, I'll actually grab a different view. So we still, lots of steel going up. Um, so the, the most progress was made 
um, right here in the, this is the four story section right across the, the front here. Um, we, if you look closely over on the, on the right hand side here, that's the, uh, the steel that will support the roof screen for C building. Um, we are also in this section right in the middle, uh, we've started masonry to form the stair shaft, the permanent stair shaft. And then if we spin around here, uh, we've got a lot of the steel in place that's closest to the building, which was nice um, to have that done and out of the way. We still have two cranes on site working away. You can see we still have lots of extra steel down here to be put in place. Um, the, the other activities that are going on, uh, you can't really see in this picture, but we still have some underground mechanical, electrical and plumbing pipe being installed. And um, our next big event would be uh, roofing at towards the end of the month. There's a, a little bit of concrete that gets poured on the roof first, and then there's some roof blocking. And then you'll see a lot of material get hoisted up on top of the roof and we'll start the actual um, roof for the ABC, the main four story section here. And then after that, um, the next big event for us would be pouring the fourth floor or the, the uh, yeah, the, the, the slab, not the roof, but the first level, the, the next slab, our first slab pour will happen after that, which will be exciting for those of us that are construction nerds. Steve, one of the most frequently asked questions is why is some of the steel painted and why is some of it rusty? Yep, and, and, and that depends on if it gets uh, spray fireproofing or not. Uh, not the entire building, not all the steel gets spray fireproofing. So that's why you'll see some of it's primed and some of it's not. And so the answer is the rusty steel gets the fireproofing. Yes. Yes, because the fireproofing will not stick to a primed piece of steel. Correct. So uh, the area that um, you see on the right side of the screen there, that's automotive and then some of the shops. Yeah. Yep. This is uh, automotive right down here in the, on the far right corner closest to the um, closest to the existing school working on our way towards this is the auditorium here, the future auditorium. Okay. And then the cafeteria to its left and then the gym to the further left. Yeah. Gym is right in this area here. So still, still making good progress. Again, if, um, if it wouldn't rain every other day, we'd be even further along. Very good. That's the, that's the major update. Thank you, Steve. Yep. Um, so the next order of business is to vote to approve the change order for number nine. Um, do you have any discussion about that? Any further discussion? So just just so everyone knows, these are change requests 55, 67, 73, 78, and 84, all of which we had talked about before, all of which the numbers have been firmed up. Uh, all, of, all of the numbers are um, approved by KBA and by Skanska, correct? I thought I just heard maybe Marianne. That's correct, yes. Yes, that's all been been reviewed, argued about, and finalized. Very good. Uh, so let's uh, do a roll, have a motion. Make a motion. Make a motion to so moved. Second. Second. Um, very good. So let's do a roll call on this. Um, act, well, let me explain the vote first. It's going to be the vote to approve sixty three thousand five hundred twenty five dollars and forty one cents, which is change order number nine. So we have the motion. We have so moved. Uh, time for roll call. Gail. Mayor Haro. Yes. Jack. Yes. Dave. Yes. Lori. Yes. Bill. Yes. Mark. Yes. Jason. Yes. Scott. Yes. Rob. Yes. Steve? Yes. Ed? Yes. Jerry? Jerry, you there? Jerry's yeah. on mute. Yes. There is. Okay. Thanks, Jerry. Jackie? Yes. Mike? Mike said yes on all change orders, and he has a comment. I'm going to read after we're done with this. 
And Andrew? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, the motion approves. In Mike's comment, a potential change to the brick exterior is a very big deal and all avenues need to be exhausted before a change is approved. This was a big selling point to have the school exterior fit in amongst the current landscape. Metal paneling is not, um, in my opinion, a viable option. So that was Mike Tyler's comment that he sent me a text message and he sent that at 6.08, which is three minutes ago. Yeah, so let me just quickly address that. What we're talking about is not changing from brick to something else. We're just talking about a different brick manufacturer. And what we've been told is that the particular clay that is used from the area it comes from can affect the color. Uh, and so therefore, we just want to make sure the color is as close as possible if we choose an alternate. And I'll ask for uh, Joe or Craig or somebody to comment on that. That's uh, perfectly right. We're just looking to change to another manufacturer that's available that makes brick that's of a similar color. Uh, and it, the color, if changed, will be um, reviewed and approved by both the building committee and the district before we go forward. And what we're hoping to do, if we do have to do that, is have available so people can stop by and see the board that had the approved brick and then the proposed brick next to it so you can see how close it is. Correct. Good. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, everyone. Um, so that motion is approved. So the next one is we're moving on to review the owner authorization letters. Um, so we have several of these, but let's say what, eight of them, seven or eight of them. And who wants to, Steve, Steve you want to take these on? Yep. Okay, yep. very good. And uh, I'll just go through all of them and do one vote at the end, or do you want to do individual? Let's do one vote at the end. Okay. All right. So first one up is OAL number 33 for overhead doors, coiling grills, and loading dock bumpers. Um, we actually have two vendors or two subcontractors um, based on um, only one Baron Industries is, I mean, the Pappas company was the only one that was um, locally that could supply the coiling doors. Um, so they're part of the award. And then for $340,000 and then Baron Industries for $83,900 would be um, the, the rest of the overhead doors and the bumpers. Uh, we have a couple of um, coordination and Miss Metals allowances built in. So the total award value is $453,900. Again, split between Baron Industries and the Pappas Company. Uh, next item, OAL number 34 is for operable partitions. Um, there were a few different uh, subcontractors we received pricing on. We're recommending CRF Inc. for this work for a grand total of $160,000 even. Next up is the appliances. Again, with three um, different pricing options that were brought in, three different subcontractors. Uh, we are recommending uh, George Washington Toma will supply them and the installation will be by Riggs. Uh, the, Total furnished number 58,359, installation 28,500. Um, we've got a couple of uh, allowances in case models change over the next couple of years or needs change and we need to adjust electrical or plumbing in the field. So the overall total $100,859. Steve, could you just tell us what these appliances are? Uh, they, they are literally, um, there, there's some, uh, dishwashers, um, there's, uh, let me get the list out for you. Steve, do you want me to field this one for you? Yeah, if you got it quick in hand. Yeah, the, it's mo it's a, almost all residential appliances for various parts of the building, um, whether it's the um, residential kitchen that's in the um, 12 plus program or in some of the other special education life skills spaces. Um, refrigerators in the building, all the miscellaneous appliances that would be throughout the building that um, are more residential in nature. Um, they're still all high quality 
um, products. They're just, uh, they're not a commercial grade washer dryer. Well, they are. We do have a commercial grade washer and dryer in the receiving area as well. Okay, so this is not the stoves in the cafeteria or in the um, in the Blue Pride cafeteria or Blue Pride Bistro. No, no that but, was, sorry, Greg, that, was, that was a separate award, uh, Jack, that we got from a kitchen vendor, Kittredge, to be exact. We had already voted on that one. So this, yeah, this is all separate from from the stuff that's in the actual kitchens. Okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, next one. Number 36 is for specialties, which includes a lot of different items. Um, it's toilet partitions and toilet accessories, cubicle track, uh, fire protection specialties, which is like fire extinguisher cabinets. It's visual display surfaces and display cases and projection screens. Um, so several different uh, subcontractors, again, provided pricing. We are recommending uh, the, the Northern Corp for the toilet partitions, accessories, cubicle track, and fire protection specialties for 396465 And we are recommending Northeast Interior Specialties, who is also doing our lab casework, um, for $509,955 for the visual display surfaces, display cases, and projection screens. Um, we also have we also bought a few uh, different um, smaller um, pieces of equipment from Northeast Interiors and included it in here as well. So the all in number is $958,921. OAL number 37 is for lockers. We are recommending the Northern Corp for this as well for $321,030. OEL 38 is flooring. So this is the non-trade uh, bid floor, which is carpet and entry grills, wood flooring, and epoxy, uh, epoxy, epoxy resinous flooring. We are recommending Ayot and King for, for the carpet and entry grills and epoxy flooring. And we are recommending JJ Curran for the wood flooring. Why is it working? The all in number, um, we got, you know, we got the wrong. Yeah. Uh, the, the all in number for this scope is one million one hundred fifty two thousand six hundred sixty seven dollars. And then the last item is OAL number thirty nine for fire stopping. We are recommending Gleason Powers for one hundred seventy six thousand five hundred. Uh, we do have some allowances built in here. This is a this is a tricky scope, um, and kind of a new regulation where there's a third party inspection here. Um, so the all in number is three hundred four thousand dollars even. Just just plug it in like that. And I and I just threw a lot of numbers at you, but um, in case you weren't adding them all up, the overall big picture is that all these numbers combined are about one hundred one thousand dollars under what we had budgeted for them. That's good. Yeah, excellent. Uh, yeah. Just one question on the wood flooring. Is that the gym floor too? Or is that a separate part? No, that's included. Very good. Thank you. Um, do we have any further discussions, questions, comments for Steve? I think we need Jackie to make a motion. Thank Move you. to approve. <laughs> so let's make a motion. Jackie. Second. Second, Jack. Okay, very good. Uh, time for a roll call vote once again. And uh, Gail, take it away. Mayor Haro. Yes. Jack. Yes. Dave. Yes. Lori. Yes. Bill. Yes. Mark. Yes. Jason. Yes. Scott. Yes. Rob. Yes. Steve. Yes. Ed. Yes. Jerry. Yes. Jackie. Yes. Mike. Yes on awarding of bids. And Andrew. Yes. Thank you. Very good. Um, so thank you. The motion passes. So do we have any other business that anybody wants to talk about? And Jack is. Yeah, 
and Jeanette. So, and Jeanette, do you want to update us on something? Um, yeah, I, I've updated the budget summary. I'm not sure if I can, um, I don't know if I can share my screen, but I think, um, Steve, if I sent it over to you, do you think you could share it? Sure. Okay, uh, hold, give me now, two seconds. Now that I'm an expert. Yeah, now that you're the expert. Um, hold on a second. Is that the one that was recently sent out right before the meeting? Yes. Um, yeah, this yeah. is, um, this is, uh, hold on, let me just send this over to Steve so we can put it up on the screen for everybody. Um, this is one that Jack had um, asked me to create just to track where we were with the project buyout. Um, so, so what I've done is um, broken it out into four, uh, the four bid packages and then I've included the updated values um, for these, uh, the, the OALs that we've just approved tonight. And then um, some of the proposed buyout values that we're carrying as placeholders. Um, and as soon as Steve can, there we go. Now it makes sense. Thanks, um, Scott. That's Scott. Yep, oh, thank Scott you, Scott. did it? Thank you, Scott. Oh, yeah. Scott, you're awesome, thank you. Um, so, so, if you just wanna scroll down a little bit, those are the one, two, and three of the bid packages we've already approved. If we get down to four, um, that shows everything that's been um, procured, all the trade and the non-trade bids. And then if you wanna go down, if you wanna stop right there, stop right there. Um, if you look uh, the fourth one down from the top, the alternate number one is for the Western fields that's included, that's the total. Um, the allowances below that have already been, those are within um, some of the OALs that have always been, uh, that have already been approved, um, and the change orders that have already been approved, and then the items in blue are yet to be um, bought out. And then if we go up, oh down at the bottom here, we've got let's say lockers. I think I just need to update that one to be that that was awarded, and then the appliances as well. So I can update that now that they've been approved. Um, and then if you go down just a little bit more, that shows uh, what I've changed from the last time we had the update is I put all of the CM um, before I just carried one figure for all their um, fees and markups and whatnot that shows the insurances, the bonds and all of that. And then it brings us down to our total construction cost. Um, and then if we scroll down just a tiny bit more, the amount expended, that's actually um, up to date with the invoices approved tonight. So the balance to finish would be 212 million. Um, and then left to, um, you know, we just have to procure, let me just see for a second, just what's um, left in the, the, the items above in blue. And we anticipate um, having everything bought out by next month. Um, we had a, originally anticipated having a GMP by this meeting for your review, um, and just because of, you know, the recent events, we we're unable to to achieve that. So our our hope is, uh, Marianne, Steve, and I are all working um, to get the GMP pulled together and have that ready for our next meeting. Very good. So we've we spent forty-seven million dollars already, and we still have two hundred and twelve million to go. That's correct. Thank you. And everybody should have this by email, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Focus on nodding their heads. Yeah. Very good. Does anybody else have any other uh, business they want to chat about? Anything on their mind? No. I think then that wraps up our meeting. And our next meeting is uh, when's the next? Uh, May thirteenth. Yeah. And we will do this the same way. Um, any questions, concerns about that? No? You know, I'm going to suggest also that we probably should put June 10th on the schedule. And maybe we'll be able to meet in person by then. Who knows? Possibly, yeah. Yeah. So I'd put June 10th would be the second Wednesday if that works for everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you, Jack. Um, so I don't think we have any other business. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Good. And I believe we need to do a roll call once again. Um, so, Gail? Okay. Mayor Harrow? Yes. Jack? Yes. Dave? Dave? Yes. Laurie? Yes. Bill? 
Yeah. Mark? Yes. Jason? Yes. Scott? Yes. Rob? Yes. Steve? Yes. Ed? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Mike? Mike's typing something right now and it hasn't come through yet, so we'll come back to Mike. Um, Andrew? Yes. Thank you. Mike's um, yes on vote. Thanks for mediation. I'll try to purchase camera before next meeting. Very good. That's what Mike said. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. You have a nice night. Okay. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.